And here we are. Blinko Visitor Center and Factory. One of mom's favorite places to be. You can see in the shadows there, they have blocks of Blinko glass in the fence. But unfortunately, I gotta put my mask on and I'm not used to filming and doing that at the same time. So I'll see you inside, guys. Okay, so I'm upstairs in their museum portion and they have examples of their beautiful designed stained glass windows. And one of the really cool things is that our connection to Blinko is that the Air Force Academy Chapel stained glass windows on each one of its peaks are made with Blinko glass. So it's really cool to be here and to look at the, where it comes from. So I'm going to show you a little bit more around the museum up here. They have um, a little bit of history. Like um, if you can see, they put dates on their pieces here. This looks um, like we have 2000 and 20 over there over in the corner all the way back to about 1980 representative pieces in this case they just have some really neat modern designs even that one's from 2017 and it's very mid-mod styling i love their decanter bottles and take you over here this is representative of a couple different artists. So, Emma Walters and Andrew Schaefer, both from 2017 to present time, designing here at Blinko. I think this case is basically showing you some of their current colors that they're pouring. So the blues and cobalts and that yellow or orange color, which they call Paw Paw, is their specific name here at Blanco. It's similar to Amberina, but it doesn't quite go to that totally that red, ruby red color. It just is in the oranges to the golds. It's a very pretty coloring. Take a look at these pieces. Let's see if I can get some without the glare. You can probably see my reflection. These are huge. Okay, so up there, doo -doo -doo -doo. what, they're six foot, seven foot tall cases. So these pieces in there are probably three to four foot each, the tall ones. Beautiful decanters, floor decanter right here, bases. Take you over here, just back up so you can just see the majority of the pieces. So we have Don Shepard, Joel Myers, they're designers in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Lots of clears and blues, browns. This is interesting, some of the animals. Look at that giant bee pern. Nice pieces. This is Winslow Anderson's work from 1947 to 1954. You've seen those horns before. They did those in lots of different colors, like a cornucopia horn. The fish is very traditional Blinko piece form. And look at that punch bowl set, amazing. Here we have Colonial Williamsburg pieces up to the early years. Looks like 1929 to 1946. I do believe that Blinko celebrated their 100th anniversary. Um, I think it was in 2018 when we were here for the very first time. So here's another couple current artists, or close, closer current. Some are current, some are not. Some of their figural pieces are amazing. You see this kind of glass working. It's really pretty cool. So look at this um, silhouette base. That's amazing. That's blown into a mold to get that look. Just gorgeous. All right, and here's their last couple cases. Wayne Husted, 1953 to 63 and some more representations of their stained glass. And this is what they look out on, in the back section behind their factory.
And you know, you yeah, can tell how brilliant the glass colors are just by the color that shows through them in the natural sunlight. So, all right, I'll take you downstairs and look around the glass sh gift shop showroom. Back in a minute. I'm gonna do a quick video. They are restocking the sun catchers. I don't know if you've heard me ever on any of my lives, but I often talk about how glass uses all your senses. And listening to them stalking the sun catchers really gets you a, an idea of how glass also uses our sense of hearing. And it's not breaking, it's just very musical. Look at these ornaments. They're fantastic in this window. They have trees. Other critters. More ornaments. Paperweights. Bookends. They have a large collection of mushrooms right now. Here's what she was stocking. That was making all that noise. So, look at these. They're just amazing. I might have to pony up and buy me a mushroom because these are fantastic. And here's a view of the room. Definitely a sense of sight. Definitely the sense of, of hearing. When you touch the glass, you can really tell the difference because of the weight of the glass that they have here at Blinko. They use, um, it's just a little bit heavier because it's, it's handmade, hand poured, and um, it's not something that they have to ship like across overseas, so it doesn't have to worry about how heavy it really is. So, fun stuff. I'll see what else I can find here in a little bit. Else that's pretty cool is even the finials on their displays are pieces of blown glass. This one's twisted. And these ones are similar to like their stoppers. You can kind of tell how sturdy their glass is just by hearing it hit the floor. And it's amazing to just see it in the sunlight. Gorgeous glass. Here's another angle of their traditional classic water bottle shape. The mini and the regular. So I'm just going to walk around and let you see some of the glass. Look at these amazing lamps. Big pieces. These are really cool because they're called lunch bag faces. Their color combinations are spectacular. Look at this. This is mom's favorite. Papa and cobalt. Beautifully displayed together. Some bowls. Canters. Thank you so much. on this side. Look at this one. That pop in it. Beautiful. There's some more ruby. With some clear. This collection here is some that amberina is this like Celeste blue kind of color. Look at this stopper. I mean, it's, it's bigger than my hand. And the stopper is, I think, priced separately. Oh yeah, look at that. It's amazing. Okay. That's pretty much the whole place. I'm trying to remember to show you what we all pick out things 
is they have their glass displayed outside in the garden. These are all bricks laid out as an edging. They've got their decanter stoppers out here on uh, those rubber coated um, rebar sections. Ooh, grasshoppers. Look at how gorgeous they are. The sun is just makes it amazing. So it's not just for, um, you know, to look at indoors. They made this one into a little uh, bird bath. Ooh, look at the dragonfly. They even like the glass. There's a cobalt one over there. Another one here with a blue stopper, a bowl. They just have it out everywhere. And here's another example of their fence They're back there. That is the factory. And there's a walkway right up there. I'm gonna see if I can go up there and watch for a little bit, see if they got a furnace is going or not. But here's the rest of the backyard with the, um, all the bricks in the paneling. It's beautiful. It's one of their old molds, half of a mold, actually. They use wood molds here, not metal. So over time, as it um, burns out from the heat of the glass, I mean, they soak them in water and they use them over and over again, but they start changing shape slowly over the years as they use their molds. Oh, we're walking out towards the, the factory floor where you can look at. I've been told they're not doing any glass right now, but we're gonna come up and look at it and talk about another sense. You can smell the fire, the gas, from the fires of the furnaces. So, we're almost hitting all of them. The only thing you can't do is taste the glass, I guess. But doesn't it look like candy? These are all their colors in um, big bricks that they put up for display to see what colors they have had. We're still making whatever. This is their viewing area. And I can see from here, right there, that's a furnace door. That's the fire is still on. And next we'll get how hot it is up here. They don't nearly have all the, oh man, but you can see them. You get that glow. So they have one, two furnaces going over here. This is some of their stations where they sit and blow the glass and turn it so that it um, stays even on the pipes. And then, um, there's the steps up to where they would have like a mold for it to be put down in and blown out to the shape. Those furnaces in the middle are not on right now, but you can see that this one is. Let's zoom in a little bit too. You can see that furnace on. Let's, should have done that over here. Yeah, I'll do that when I'm back over there again. But I'm going to do a quick uh, walkthrough on their explanations. Since I don't know it all, but I will just show you what they're doing. So here's like the two pieces of a mold, like I showed you in the garden. So that's an apple shaped one that they, when they took it off the pipe, they put the stem on. And this is also a tool they use for making, shaping it. And then that one as well. Um, we're gonna go look over here and see what we got. So they're explaining it as, here's the gatherer. The operation begins as a gatherer collects a globule of hot glass on the end of a blowpipe. Great skill is required since a correct amount of glass must be collected and it must be reasonably symmetrical. Large blown pieces can require as much as 10 pounds of glass. Now you have the blower. The ball of hot glass is then handed over to the blower um, and marveled, rolled in on the metal plate. Now the blower lets out a puff of air and traps it in the pipe with his thumb, thumbing out. After the ball is large enough to work with the blower, begins to shape and smooth the, the ball of glass. It is then formed to fit the mold for the piece that is being made. It takes years of experience to accomplish this task repeatedly. It must be done quickly within the moment's hesitation, without a moment's hesitation, because the glass is only workable when it is hot. The glass form 
is then inserted into the mold and bolt blown out. The piece must be rotated in the mold so that it is symmetrical. After the piece is completely shaped, it moves on to the next step. Stick up boy. The piece is allowed to cool very slightly as it comes from the mold. Then the stick up boy attaches a long pontal rod tipped with a bit of hot glass to the center of the bottom of the piece. The piece is cracked off near the end of the blowpipe by chilling it with water and carrying it to the finisher who reheats it. The finisher, a rugged uneven edge is cut off by the finisher leaving a clean straight edge. The form is generally reheated once again to give the finisher a soft glass to work with. The form is then completely crafted to the design indicated by the master sample piece. The finisher then removes the finished object from the rod with a file-like tool and a gentle tap of the rod. Bit boy, this job is a catching, is a catch-all kind of job. The title bit boy comes from the job of gathering glass for additions to the piece by the finisher. These additions are called bits. Things like handles, wraps, and other decorations fall into this category. The bit boy may also help out in other areas of the shop. Carrion boy, the carrion boy receives a piece on the implement called a fork and proceeds to place it in the layer to emerge as a finished piece approximately four hours later. And here I think we've just pretty much, it, it starts over again. So again, this is where they do all that work in one huge, well, this is just one room of it. And you can see where the blowers and the exhausts are. Some of the blow pipes over there against the wall. Here's the, the seat where they do the rolling of the glass to keep it evenly. But these furnaces are just amazing. They put off an enormous amount of heat. And the only way it's not like just ridiculously hot is because of all the cross ventilation. I don't know if you can see it here, those slats on the side where the sun is coming through, that is open for the air to be pulled through to help ventilate these furnace rooms. So, and that's how hot it is just looking at it with the door shut. It's amazing. Blanco's done some amazing work and we love living somewhere like Colorado Springs where we can see it. And actually right now they are taking, um, they're doing renovations on the, the chapel at the academy so that um, it's all sealed up well. It's the first time they've ever done any of that since it was installed. So here's something I found interesting. This is where some of this stuff washes out. Let's see if I can zoom in. That's what looks like rocks and stuff. It's all bits of glass. That's washed through from the factory floor or the other side of the factory over here where stuff has been. And it just washes out and you see bits of glass going down onto this side where it collects up and uh, sparkles in the sun and down here into their garden. So, all right guys. That's basically the quick tour of the Blinko glass blowing factory. So it's an amazing craft and hopefully it can carry on with some more people, more generations learning how to do it. And um, as long as there's people out there loving the glass and what they're producing here, I think they will continue as long as they can. There's not many glass factories left here in West Virginia. So, all right, see you soon.